worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all of our praises. He's worthy. He's worthy. And we've come to the house of the Lord to give him praise. We've come to the house of the Lord to lift him up today because he is worthy. He's been good. He's been kind. He's been faithful. He's been just. He's given us exactly what we need when we need it. God is so awesome. He is so awesome. And I just want to say thank you. 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 Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is a house of praise. This is a house of worship. This is a house of love. This is a house of giving thanks. This is the place. You're in the right place. At the right time. To give him some praise. Did he not do it? Did he not wake you up this morning? Did he not allow you to come out and say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. I give him glory this morning. I give him praise this morning. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and get in the word. I'm going to go ahead and get in the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give honor and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give honor to the associate ministers, to executive minister, Wynn. I give honor to the choir this morning that have come out to sing the songs of Zion. Because that's what we're here to do. It's to lift him up and to glorify his name. Because without him, we can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. If you only believe, we got some conditions. You got to believe it down in your sanctified heart that God's going to do just what he said he's going to do. And I'm a believer this morning. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Amen, amen, amen. This morning, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to rest on your feet. I do give honor, last but not least, to my husband. I thank God for allowing him to share the word this morning and allow it to Find a lodging place in your heart that you may see his vision for your life clearly. Amen. I give honor to my daughter as well as in the uh, balcony. And also give honor to my son in his absence. I just thank God for what he's doing in our lives because he's real. Amen. I'm, our um, scripture this morning, we're coming from Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am approved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and all wise God, we come to you right now. Thank you right now for this opportunity, for this space to share what you have given to this, your servant. We ask you right now, the Lord, to have your way in this service. Lord, speak to me. Lord, and as you speak, that I listen and that I obey. Lord, if there's anything that's not right, that's not like you, we ask you right now, the Lord, to cast it in the sea of forgiveness, never, never to rise again. Lord, let others may see you and not me for my sinful self. Ask you right now, the Lord, to lift us up and that we have not only be hearers of the word, but doers also. Lord, have your way. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength 
and thy redeemer. Speak, Lord. Speak in Jesus' name. Amen. My subject this morning is speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Speak, for thy servant is listening. As a trial child growing up, I was traditionally taught to never question God, for he knows what's best for us. Questioning God was a sign of disrespect and a lack of faith in God's plan for our lives, for it was orchestrated by divine design. Yes, God's ways and thoughts are higher, higher than ours. Yes, we should have faith that moves mountains. Yes, God never makes a mistake. Yes, God has a plan, purpose, and position for each of us. But when we look at the world and its wickedness, we often stop even just for a moment and wonder, if God is good all the time, why is there evil in the world? If God is just, why do bad things happen to good people? If God is not a respect of persons, why does the wicked prosper? And if we are truly honest with ourselves, we've all asked God, why am I suffering? Why did I have to go through this? Why did this happen to me? Why God? Why? These are all excellent questions, and contrary to belief, it's perfectly acceptable to seek answers from the Lord, as it invokes a closer fellowship with him. God does not always answer our questions in the way we want or when we want, but we must come to him with reverence, realizing that he is perfect in wisdom. We must come ready to receive, or better yet, listen, trust, and obey what he has to say concerning the matter. See, when we decide to listen to the Lord, he has our full attention. See, for hearing, you just perceive sound. But listening is a conscious choice to concentrate on the words that are being spoken with the intention of understanding and obeying. We too must be willing to seek God with our whole hearts, allowing God to speak to our weary souls. Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. Therefore, let us listen this morning to what the Lord is saying to Habakkuk and to us. See, Habakkuk penned this book of hope and encouragement just before Judah is invaded and taken captive by the Babylonians. See, he lived during the reign of King Jehoiakim, who did evil in the eyes of the Lord, which only helped to magnify the violence, injustice, lawlessness that was running rampant in Judah. Yeah. Habakkuk was fatigued, he was frustrated and furious at the state of society. In his desperate plea for help, the prophet finds himself crying out to God in that first chapter, saying, How long, Lord? How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Habakkuk honestly sought the Lord with a sincere heart. Despite his repeated inquiries, his desire for God to rectify the injustices, to restore the righteous, and to reinstate law and order was met with silence. This too may resonate in our own lives. So many times we have cried out to God, but the answers to our petitions were delayed or that was silent. Don't get discouraged. God will answer. 
And I'm speaking from a personal place. God will answer at the appointed time. It may not be what we want to hear or how we expect him to deliver us. But he does incline his ear to the righteous. Therefore, we should, I should call upon him as long as I have breath in this body. I'm going to call on the one who has me in the palm of his hands. I'm going to call on the one that is always ready and willing to hear from his child. I'm going to call on the one to put breath in my life, in my body. I'm going to call on the one that knew me even before I was formed in my mother's womb. I'm going to call on the one that knows it all, that's in every place at all times. I'm going to call on the one. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak, Lord. For thy servant is listening. Habakkuk's persistence yields results. The Lord replies, but his answer is unexpected. The Lord reveals that it's about the Lord reveals that he is about to unleash the heathen cruel nation of Babylon to punish Israel for his idolatry and disobedience. The Lord lets him know that the world was going to be amazed at his handiwork. Now I can imagine what Habakkuk was probably thinking. Lord, I asked for help, not destruction. I prayed for the righteous to be vindicated, not exiled or even killed. I petitioned for justice to be served. How can this be? How can you permit such evil? Surely you're not going to annihilate your people. Will you not show mercy? See, isn't that just like us today? We want to be the H-N-I-C, the head Negro in charge, instead of the S-O-C, which is the servants of Christ. We want God to move on our behalf, but it must be in the way that we want him to respond and the time that we want him to act. Don't put God in a box. We need to learn to trust him and lean not to our own understanding. For in all our ways, if we acknowledge him, he will direct our path. See, this doesn't mean that we never doubt or falter, but it does mean that we seek the truth and we seek his help, even when we don't understand. Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. Therefore, in his quest to fully comprehend what the Lord was doing, Habakkuk goes to the watchtower, and he waits for God to answer him again. He enters into his secret closet, and he confidently waits for the most holy one to respond. See, in order for the Lord to speak to us, we must withdraw from worldly distractions. Take time to be alone with God. Turn the TV, the telephones, and the tablets off. Find a place of solitude. Stop talking and allow God to speak to our spirits. Stop talking and allow God to speak to our spirits through his word and in prayer. We are so busy with this care, with this cares of life that we fail to focus on the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who breathed life in us, the one who called us, the one who kept us, the one who strengthens us, the one who saved us from sin and shame. Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. See, during his quiet time, the Lord answered. He told Habakkuk to write the vision down on tablets so that everyone can read 
and get the message. So the Lord doesn't want any misinterpretations or misprints. He wants everyone to know his plans to save his chosen people. When the Lord speaks to us, write down his message so that we can meditate on his words. Write down what he says so that we can maneuver through life's corridors. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. <laughs> Write down what he says so we can visualize the manifestation. For his word shall not return void, and it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper. Write down his words as a reminder that we have had an encounter with our God. And he's turned our doubts into devotion and our apprehensiveness into adoration. See, when we've had an encounter with our Lord, a transformation takes place. We're not the same anymore. The word tells me that any man that is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and all things have become brand new. We sing that song, I looked at my hands, and they looked new. I looked at my feet, and they did too. If you take a look in the mirror, are you seeing something different when you're in the world, now that you're in the body of Christ? Your whole countenance should be different. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For thy servant is listening. See, when his glory, when you've had that encounter with God, and his glory has been revealed, our countenance reflects what's in our heart. When his glory has been revealed, his son, that holy one, his son, the true vine, his son, the bread of life, is more evident in our lives. See, when Moses asked God to show him his glory, not only did his countenance change, but also his character. The more time that we spend with the Lord, the more we are fashioned into the image of Christ, allowing us to love as only he can, allowing us to turn our fears into faith and our confusion into contentment. Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. The Lord has spoken, and because of his personal relationship with the Father, Habakkuk recognized his voice. The word tells me that the sheep know his voice. Do you know when he's calling this morning? Speak. See, Habakkuk made a conscious decision to listen attentively. However, God's directives may not be immediate. So what do we do now? What do we do now? What do we do now when we're still in the storm? What do we do now when the silence What do we do now when you cry and there's no relief? What do you do now when the doctor is giving you a bad report? What do you do now when your husband or your wife walks out on you? What do you do now when your friend Turn their back on you. Better yet, what do you do now when your church members turn their back on you? What do you do now when you've been hurt in the church? What do you do now when you can't see how you're going to put food on the table? What do you do now when you can't even mumble a word? What do you do now? Wait. 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 Wait 
on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. The word says, but they that wait on him shall renew their strength. Do you believe that this morning? If you wait on the Lord, the word says we shall, he shall renew our strength. Just wait on him. Wait on him. That's what the Lord is saying this morning. Wait on him. Wait on him for deliverance will come in God's perfect time. To everything there is a season and there's a time for every purpose under the heaven. Do not become anxious and decide to take matters into your own hands. Do not decide to take a detour and end up on the wrong path. A resolution may not come as quickly as you may hope. And a delay is definitely not a denial. But wait on the Lord, for he will give you courage, and he will strengthen you. He will do it in due time. The word says, don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Don't give up this morning. Don't turn around. Keep going forward. Keep pressing. Keep striving. Keep praying. Keep praising. Keep singing. Keep lifting up your hands. Keep testifying. Keep witnessing. Keep giving God the glory this morning. Keep doing what God has called us to do this morning. Keep going. Don't give up. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. Now I know I have more than three witnesses. Four witnesses. I know I do. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't bring you to this place to leave you. He didn't bring you to this place to throw you out. He brought you this morning to let you know, hold on, my child. Just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. The best is yet to come. He's speaking this morning. He's speaking this morning. If he brought you to it, he will certainly bring you out. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For thy servant is listening. I'm just filled up this morning. See, for Habakkuk, he was reassured that his righteous remnant will rise to an occasion and that God will not totally destroy Israel because of his covenantal promises. See, even though the Babylonians are ruthless, arrogant warriors who are never satisfied, they will get what they deserve. Don't worry about the wicked. Or envy those who do wrong. But like the grass, they shall soon fade away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Habakkuk's perspective has changed. And he begins to pray again and begins to worship by faith. Even though he didn't realize it, he was going to believe God for it. Worship by faith. Whatever the reasons, we must continually remind ourselves that worship 
is perfected by our faith in Christ. True faith not only seeks to worship, but also seeks to worship as God directs. For those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, there are various ways to worship, but worship cannot be learned. I'm going to repeat that again. Worship cannot be learned. It's a spontaneous act of a heart that's been overwhelmed by a revelation of God's glory and his incredible love for us. Worship is a response of gratitude and joy. If there's gratitude, if there's joy, if there's thankfulness for what God has done, then when we come in here every Sunday, it should not be a ritual. It should not be something that you're doing because your neighbor is lifting their hand. It should not be something that you're doing because it's the right protocol. It's something that you need to be doing because God has done something for you. Now, I know God has done something for everyone that is in here. I should not have to pump you up. I should not have to tell you that God is good all the time. I should not have to te tell you that you need to bless the Lord at all times. I should not have to tell you that God is love. I should not have to tell you that he will answer in due time. That's something that you need to know from your heart. Worship, worship, worship. God is worthy of all the praises. God is worthy to be praised. Even if he doesn't do another thing, even if he doesn't let me see tomorrow, I'm going to praise him while I got a chance. I'm going to lift him up while I got a chance. I'm going to thank him while I got a chance. I'm going to love on him while I got a chance. I'm going to tell him thank you for saving me. Thank you. Thank you. Worship, 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 hallelujah.
Hallelujah. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. Worship. 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 Worship recognizes how we should have been destroyed by our sins long ago. Incurring the full wrath of God. For all of our failures and faults. See, I'm so glad he does not treat us as our sins deserve. I'm so glad that he does not repay us according to our iniquities. But instead, what God does do, God came with a powerful revelation. And it's simple. It's so simple. He loves you. He loves you. No matter what you've done. No matter what you may be in right now. He still loves you. Speak, Lord. For thy servant is listening. See, Rebecca had transitioned from why to whom. He recognized that God is in control. Regardless of the circumstances surrounding his concerns, he humbly sought God for answers. And in time, the Lord revealed his infinite wisdom. Habakkuk ends by saying, even if there's no food in the fields. Habakkuk ends by saying, even if there's no livestock, in the barns. Yet will I be glad in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. For he has set me upon a high place. I like how David told the story. He said, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Speak, Lord. For thy servant is listening. Remember this morning that God's compassions fail not, nor his mercies. God did not get angry with Habakkuk for questioning him because he knew that he truly desired the truth and he wanted to serve God. And sometimes we don't ask God because we really don't want to know the truth. The Lord knew all about his situation and his suffering and understood what he was going through. But listen, Habakkuk didn't remain restless or disheartened. Neither did our friend Job. Instead, they honestly sought God. And in time, God reached down and brought comfort. He brought hope and redemption. Know all your questions may not be answered. But as being men and women of faith, see that God's greatness and his love is always abounding in our lives. The word tells us to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for our labor is not in vain. God has a plan, a purpose, and a position for our lives. He has plans to prosper us, to give us peace and good success. So, my brothers and my sisters, not if, but when you need to hear from the Lord, withdraw to your secret place. And when he speaks, remain quiet. 
and listen to his words. It's an opportunity for God to deposit his plans into your spirit. And as his plans are being revealed, write it down and use it as an encouragement to endure. And in the midst of waiting, worship thy faith. Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. Then as I close, just as Jesus had a moment of humanity, as he asked God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In this moment, he felt the sins of this world. He felt the sins of you and I. And how sin distances you from God. But in his seeking God, he never forsook his purpose. He cried out in distress, but not in distrust. Through his blood-bought sacrifice, we are saved from eternal hell. Why not choose eternal life this morning by accepting Christ as your Savior? Here I am. Here I am. servant is listening. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Speak. As we rest on our feet this morning, Is there one this morning that may be going through some trials, that may be going through some things that they don't quite understand? Is there one this morning that has some questions that they need to talk to the Lord about it? Don't run to family and friends. Don't run to the telephone. Don't run to your cell. Run to Jesus. For he is speaking. And we need to listen. Is there one this morning? Is there one this morning? That wants to accept Speak Christ. To my heart, Lord. Is there one this morning? Give me your home. You can come word. as a candidate for baptism. If I can't hear from you, you can come then I'll know on your Christian experience. Do. I won't go. You can alone. come seeking restoration. I'll never go on my own. If you're looking Just for a, a church home. Spirit guide. Union and Branch will we'll welcome Speak you. To my heart. Most importantly, our Father in heaven Give me your welcomes you. Word. Is there one this morning? He's speaking to some you. one this morning. Then I know what to do. Speak, I Lord. Won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide. And let your word abide. Speak there is to no other way to live Lord. than in Christ. Give me your holy there is no other word. way to live. If I can't hear from you, there is no other way to prosper. Then I know there is no other to way do. to be in hell. There is no other alone. way to have a right I mind than in Christ. Just at your spirit, God. We have done what thus saith the Lord. 
The word tells us that the word does not go out void. It will accomplish that what he pleases, and it shall prosper. And I'm standing on faith this morning that the word that went forth, you would take it and apply it to our everyday lives. It starts right here with me. Allow God to speak to you. Get into your secret closet. Withdraw from everything and everyone. Wait on him. When he speaks, write it down. And while you're waiting, worship. Worship him by faith.